Hey, what's up? Welcome back. In this episode, you'll learn all about how to use Devise for authentication with Rails 7. We're going to talk about a couple of settings that I like to configure so that it works with Turbo. We're going to build out our own custom views with Tailwind. It should be pretty fun, so let's get started. So I'm going to say bundle add Devise. That's going to add the gem to our gem file. It's also going to run bundle install. Next thing we're going to do is run um, Rails G Devise colon install. This sets up the initializer and some localiz localization for us. And it also prints out some instructions. So we want to copy this action mailer default thing and drop that into development.rb if we haven't already. I like to drop it right after this mailer section because it is part of the action mailer settings. It's been that way for a really long time. We've already got a root route based on the previous episode. The next thing we want to do is add these flash notices to our application HTML ERB. You can put those wherever really, but for now we'll just put them here like suggested. Um, okay, and then finally we're going to run Rails G Devise Views so that we have access to a bunch of different templates that we can edit if we need to customize any of the views, which we're going to do. All right, so at this point we have sort of all of the Devise stuff set up to work with the Devise gem, but we haven't actually set up a model. So at this point we need to store users in the database so that we can authenticate with them. So we're gonna say Rails G model user, and I'm not gonna add any attributes to it at this point. We're just gonna create a new table in the database called users. It's gonna have some timestamps, but for now it's just gonna be a model. So we'll say Rails DB migrate, and that's gonna migrate the database and add those users to the database. Okay, next thing we wanna do is say uh, Rails G devise users, and that's gonna generate um, a migration that will attach a bunch of authentication fields to the users table. So let's open up that migration, take a look. So here we're changing the users table. We're adding email and encrypted password. We're also adding some recovery information. If we want to, we can uncomment a bunch of different features of device. We can make it trackable and or confirmable and or lockable, etc. So what I'm gonna do is just make it trackable and then we'll say Rails DB migrate. That's gonna migrate the database, make those changes to the users table. We also need to go check out our routes file. So inside of routes, this device for helper method was added calling out users. So now we're gonna have this new section of, uh, of, the, of our routes or this new set of routes that is related to authenticating with users, resetting their password, doing a whole bunch of stuff with users. All right, so now at this point, we should be able to jump over to localhost 3000 and we see this undefined method for device, whatever, that's because we need to restart our server after we add new gems. So we're restarting the server here, we'll come back, refresh the page, and we don't actually see anything about logging in or logging out, but we can go directly to law to figure out what our routes are. So uh, we see a whole bunch of user routes. So one here, one here is gonna be called users slash sign up. So if we just look at the users routes, we are gonna find one here that says sign up. This is the new registration path. So if we go to directly to users slash sign up, we're gonna see this page. This is where we can log in, or this is, I'm sorry, this is where we can create and register a brand new account inside of Rails. I'm gonna open up Tailwind UI, and we're gonna use Tailwind UI's components for our registration page. So I'm gonna say uh, sign up, and so under the forms component in Tailwind UI, there's a sign in and registration. Note that Tailwind UI is a paid um, this is a paid product. You can sign up and uh, I've used the components from Tailwind UI a ton. So here we're gonna just copy all of the HTML from this simple card for registering um, for your account. Now what we can do is go over to the views. Let's actually take a look here. So inside of the views for device, they have several different uh, directories here that are gonna help us with confirmations or mailers that are gonna be sent, password resetting, registration, or sessions. So the new template or the new view for the signup route is where we're gonna find the code for the registration. Now this is using Form 4, and my hot take is that using Form Helpers makes it more challenging to use, and this is a great example of why. So right here, what I actually wanna do is I'm just gonna copy all of the HTML for the sign-in form and drop it in. Now, I don't wanna have to figure out what all of the form helpers are in order to get this form to work with this Tailwind thing that I'm adding. Instead, what I wanna do is I just wanna go directly to the HTML form, make a small change that's gonna be related to the action here, and I want it to just work, right? I don't wanna have to modify all of the HTML that I just imported so that it works with these form helpers. So. 
Um, but we do need to do a little bit of investigation in terms of what features this existing form from devise we need to carry over into our new form. So one thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna remove or continue with in all of the social buttons at the bottom. So I'm gonna say uh, this or continue with, we're gonna remove this entire div and all of the stuff at the bottom. I think maybe that was a little too aggressive here. We're just gonna grab that and go straight down until we find the div that we need to remove. Okay, now if we refresh the page, we don't see that stuff at the bottom. All right, we're getting closer. The, the original device form has three inputs. There's password and password confirmation. So we're gonna need another input for password here. So I'm just gonna grab the entire div for password and drop it in. And this will be our password confirmation uh, field. So we're just gonna say this is a label for password confirmation and, or just password confirm. And then we're gonna figure out what the name is later. And then here we can just say, you know, confirm password and that should work just fine. So now we have three fields and those should match what we see up here. Now if we inspect this form that's generated by that form helper, we'll see that uh, inside of this, we're seeing the action is slash users and the method is post. So inside of our form, we wanna use again, slash users and the method is post. So this is important and that's gonna be where our form is. Now we also have this hidden input. This is one of the things that form helpers do give you is the authenticity token. They protect you from CSRF, et cetera, et cetera. But you can just add an input that is type hidden and has the value form authenticity token and you'll be just as safe when it comes to CSRF, right? Okay, the next thing that we wanna do here is figure out what the names are on these input boxes. So the input here, the name is important because this is gonna be the key for setting the params correctly so that it works and plays nicely with device. So the name here is user with the email being passed inside of that hash. So here on our email input, I'm gonna to go to the name and add user with square brackets around it. And the same thing with password, user, password. Now the name for password confirmation is gonna be something different. So we're gonna inspect that. Jump down here, user password confirmation. So this is gonna be um, for our final setting here, user password confirmation, and that should be good to go. Okay, if we refresh the page here. At this point, I think we should be in a good place to populate our form. So we're gonna enter in, I don't know, test at example dot com password password now notice that our forgot password button isn't going to work yet and also this sign up for your free trial isn't going to work yet but we should be able to at least sign up okay if you see this error message undefined user url for device registrations controller this is most likely because we have not set up device navigation to support turbo so by default all of these forms if we don't disable turbo, um, it is going to use turbo by default. So what we can do is we can go to our initializer for device and in the navigational formats, we want to allow this new turbo stream as a format, as a navigational format. Because we're changing an initializer, we want to restart the server and we'll go back to users sign up slash users slash sign up and we're gonna to try to sign up again. So we're gonna say uh, test at example.com. Actually, this should be test two because we already have test and password, password, and now we'll click sign in. All right, welcome, you successfully signed up. That's awesome, now we can go over, and we were redirected uh, successfully. So notice that's kind of like how we get over that one error. Um, so if you encounter that, you can update your navigational formats inside of the initializer for config or the initializer for device. We need to continue updating the sign up view or the registration view so that it doesn't have two forms on the page. So let's go back over there. Um, and if we try to go to users slash sign up now, it's going to say you're already signed in, right? So one thing that we need to do is be like figure out how we're going to do a sign out. So one option, uh, is to use to add a button on every single page that it will submit a like delete request or uh, it'll submit a post request in order to sign you out and like reset your login. Another option is that you can go over to this device config again where the initializer is. Instead of having sign out via delete, we can have this sign out via get. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna restart our server. Now if you navigate to users slash sign out, you are signed out successfully. This is, there's a, little, a couple little downsides to this. One is maybe if you have some sort of like screen scraping thing and you accidentally navigate to that page, it might sign you out, but whatever. For now, we're gonna call this good. So we're signed out successfully. We wanna go back to users slash sign up and we wanna remove this entire form from the page. And I think we should be pretty good here with our, uh, with our email address stuff. All right, so let's go back to the registration new and we're gonna remove this form entirely. Now you'll notice that there is some shared links here. Now these shared links are going to potentially come in handy. And if we look at the view for that partial, which is this shared links partial, you'll notice that it has like, oh, you should log in if you're not, if you're not on the login page, then show a link that shows how to log in. If you're not in the sign up page, show a link to sign up. It also will give you a link to the forgot passwords, et cetera, et cetera. So we did not enable uh, password recovery, so it's not gonna show a forgot password, but we could theoretically add this new password path, whatever. For now, we're gonna call this good, and we're gonna just manually add this sign up um, or login. Now, when you copy from Tailwind UI, it includes a comment at the top that says, you know, in order to use this example, you should update your tailwind.config to include these plugins. So if we go to our tailwind config, you'll notice that we don't have any plugins installed yet. So what we can do is just copy this entire uh, plugins section and drop it in here. And that will allow us to use this tailwind CSS forms plugin. Now, if we look at the server right now, you'll notice the server crashed. <laughs> That's because it doesn't uh, have this Tailwind CSS forms component yet. So we can say npm install that Tailwind CSS forms. And now we can say bin dev to restart the server now that it knows how to find the Tailwind CSS forms component. All right, coming back over here, we know that this was completed. Now also this, it says this example requires updating your template so that the HTML class is hful and the HTML body is hful. Now, these two tags ha are set inside of application HTML ERB. So if we wanted to, we could come in here and say class hful and body is class hful. Now, I'm not gonna add the background color because we're gonna probably control that in a different way. So that's just a choice that we're making at this point. All right, so now we have a thing that says sign into your account, but we are on the registration page. So let's actually update this copy a little bit and where, where it says sign into, we're gonna say register for a new account. Now it's also got this logo at the top for the you know um, Tailwind's uh, UI default stuff that's part of their template. So I'm gonna remove that and we're looking pretty good. So we've got register for a new account, or start your 14 day free trial. And this is where we actually wanna just say like, or, uh, or log in and we're gonna call that good. And then this route is just gonna to be to user slash sign in. And that will allow people to log in. Let's remove the forgot password link. But I'm gonna leave remember me and we're gonna use remember me on the sign in page and then we'll come back and delete it from the registration page. So let's copy this entire thing over to the sessions new. This is where the login page exists. So now we're gonna just paste that in here. And now if we go to user slash sign in, now we see a, a similar view that we're about to edit. So if we save this and refresh the page, now we see this, uh, our new Tailwind UI sort of uh, template down here. We can change the, the H2 to say now sign in. And instead of login, we're gonna say sign up come back over here, change our path to users slash sign up. And we're gonna just delete all of this. Uh, actually, before before we delete the form that was pre-built, we need to look at this remember me and see what names it is using inside of the HTML so that we can pass those down. So there's two input boxes here. One is a hidden input with the value of zero. The other is not hidden and it's a checkbox with the value of one in the name is uh, user remember me. Actually, the name is the same on both checkboxes. The values are different, one's hidden, one's not. That's how you can kind of like submit checked or unchecked. So if we come back down to our checkbox uh, here, what we can do is copy that, paste it, and we're gonna set the name um, 
Actually, we can, yeah, let's, for our hidden input, we're gonna say, um, the type is gonna be hidden, and the name is gonna be something else. So the type is gonna be hidden for our first one, and then the name is going to be whatever we have here. So user remember me. This is how devise will know that we intend on actually keeping the user logged in. Now, the other thing is that for the hidden input, we're setting the value equal to zero, and for the non-hidden input, we're gonna set the value equal to one. That's because when, we're, uh, when the box is not checked, we want to submit false as the value for remember me. If the box is checked, we wanna submit the value one for remember me. Another change we wanna do is remove this confirm password. We only need that at sign up time, not when we're logging back in. All right, so now we have this sign in or sign up. We have our email and password and we have the remember me link and we have sign in. Okay, let's go back to the registrations page. The submit button for registration should actually be sign up. And now we can remove the remember me link from the page. So we can actually remove that entire div. So let's go back to users sign up and see how that looks. Okay, this is looking really fresh. Okay, so we don't have a remember me. We have email password, confirm password, and a sign up link. That's all looking really good. We can click on login. This brings us to the sign in page. Sign in versus login versus register. There's a bunch of debate that we can have around that, but I think we're at a good point where we can actually just remove all of this content. Now I did notice this, this has um, the forgot password link. So why don't we add that in on our sign in page? So here, right after remember me, we're gonna add that, uh, that confirmation or the, the um, forgot password right back in. So let's find forgot password and we will add this link back in here. Okay, so let's add, let's re-add forgot password. Now the forgot password is going to go to a specific path. So we'll just look at what that path is, slash users password new, slash users password new. That should give us the forgot password route. So now we have this forgot password. It brings us to our forgot password link. I'm not actually gonna style forgot password for now. You can kind of like get the idea and go through and update all of the UI. So uh, you have all of the pieces. Sign up and sign in are gonna be the two that we're gonna see the most. So those are the ones that I care the most about making sure they are looking good. Okay, so if we refresh the page now, we've got our email input and we have our password input. Those are looking okay. Test at example.com, enter our password, click sign in. Now when we click sign in, nothing happened. That's because we have the form. Um, the form is going to the wrong route, I think. So let's, where is this one going? Inspect. So this form is going to users slash sign in and the method is post. Okay, so that's what we want to have happen here. So we're gonna have our form go to user slash sign in. Okay, so test at example.com. Enter our password, click sign in. All right, now we are signed in successfully. So we've got an authentication flow that seems to be working pretty well. Um, this root page doesn't, get, it's not very nice to look at yet. So we're gonna come back and in the, in the next episode, we're gonna talk about how we can spruce up this landing page. All right, so that's how you add device authentication with Tailwind UI and making sure that it works in Rails 7. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.